Welcome to Live Town Hall. My name is Michael A. Charbon. We've got an interesting show for you today. Um, I want to read you a couple of things here. The show today is going to be about the politics of the freedom of the press. It's about the press reporting the news. It's about accountability, both from the press and politicians. And basically, it's about the politics of reporting on politics. What I want to do is I want to frame this for you by reading a couple of quotes that will, as one would say, set the table. A critical and independent and investigative press is the lifeblood of any democracy. The press must be free from state interference. It must have economic strength to stand up to the blandishments of government officials. It must have sufficient independence from the vested interests of the bold and inquiring without the fear of favor. It must enjoy the protection of the Constitution so that it can protect our rights as citizens. Nelson Mandela. Uh, uh, Sir Winston Churchill said, some people's idea of free speech is that they are free to say what they like. But if anyone says anything back, that's an outrage. Interesting twist. Mark Twain said, there are laws to protect the freedom of the press's speech, but none that are worth anything to protect the people from the press. Here's an interesting one to consider. If in the morning I walked on top of the water across the Potomac River, obviously in the United States, in Washington, the headline that afternoon would read, The President Can't Swim, Linda B. Johnson. And this final quote pretty much frames it, I would think. The press is an invaluable arm of the presidency as a check on what's going on in the administration. It's a terrific disadvantage of not having the abrasive quality of the press applied to you daily or your administration. Even though we never liked it, even though we wish they didn't write it, even though we disapproved of it, there isn't any doubt we can't do the job at all in any free society without a very active press. Now, on the other hand, the press has a responsibility not to distort things for political purposes, not to just take some news to prove a political point. Their objective is to be as tough on the administration as they can, but to do it in a way which is directed as close to the truth as they can get, not just merely because of some political motivation. President John F. Kennedy in his second year in office. As of late, there were some titles that um, were, were put across on uh, several newspapers, uh, both in the Toronto Star and the Guardian. And uh, basically, they talked about uh, problems that were happening in Brampton. Uh, they were talking about Brampton Councillor Attacks News Service. Embattled Brampton Councillor Channels Trump in Attack on the Media. The councillor who proposed this, is here with me today, as well as her uh, friend and fellow councillor. Joining me today is Ms. Gail Miles. Uh, she's the regional councillor for Ward 7 and 8, and she was first elected in Brampton in 1988. Welcome, Gail. Thank you, Michael. Beside her, first elected in Brampton in 2003, Elaine Moore, who is the regional council for Wards 1 and 2. Elaine, thank you so much for one being here. 1 and 5. Here. Sorry? Wards 1 and 5. 1 to 5. What did I say? 1 and 2. I beg your pardon, 1 to 5, <laughs> absolutely. But 2003 is correct. 2000 is correct. 2000. I'm going to fire my researcher. <laughs> so I just want to talk about the motion, Gail. I mean, there's been lots of controversy that's that's come up. There are some people who have suggested that um, you're trying to stifle the press. Um, I want to first say that uh, Peter Criscione uh, from The Guardian was asked if he wished to appear here. He declined, and his comment was that the story is not about him, uh, which is uh, true. Uh, the motion that uh, you presented, uh, Councillor Mao, was that uh, you want to have copies of all media inquiries received by council and members of council and the mayor posted to the city website so that councillors, members of council, the mayor, can answer those questions and post those answers. Is that, is that fair? Well, that's, that's exactly what the motion says. And the motion is by no way um, intended to stifle the media at all. In fact, what it does is it gives the public all of the facts. And I think the public deserve the truth. You know, the media um, sends us on a regular basis all kinds of questions um, in writing, mm -hmm. and we respond to them. And sometimes those questions could take anywhere well, from three hours to two days to answer those questions. And at the end of the day, one sentence could be printed in, so, in the media. So it's, 
So it's speaking of questions, honesty. I want to connect to our folks at home. This is Facebook Live. You can join us on Facebook Live. Go to Live Town Hall and post your questions. This is all about an interactive show. We have both Councillor Miles and, and Councillor Moore here uh, to answer any questions that you wish to pose, uh, either on the press or related to anything. Uh, the whole point here is to interact with you and incorporate your questions and your uh, interest in inquiries. You can also make comments, and we will be reading them as we go on through. Um, Councillor Moore, how do, you, how do you relate to this? Councillor Miles, I mean, how do you relate to this motion? Well, I support it wholeheartedly. When uh, Councillor Miles called me that uh, she wanted to put forward this motion, um, I believe that when I receive a series of questions from the media and I spend time putting those questions together, as Councillor Miles sometimes says, sometimes they cherry pick through um, to fill in spaces in the story. I think in the interest of transparency and being accountable to the residents I represent, they deserve to know what questions I was asked and make a judgment for themselves as to whether I an answered them honestly, forthright, uh, and in the kind of detail that they would expect me to. So, so one, one for me, your, it was about transparency. One of your colleagues on council said that the motion is bizarre and it's almost childish. Uh, how, how would we police this? Does this include radio and television and a spontaneous interviews? Um, also, there was a comment that, uh, that said that uh, this is nothing more than government overstepping their boundaries. How do you react to that? Well, I mean, this is, this is about print media. This is not about radio or any other kind of media. Michael, we're sitting here, you're asking us a question, we're giving you an answer, it's uncensored, it's truth, it's fact. The problem is, is the questions that we get from the media and the way they decide to uh, print those stories is a totally different uh, ball of wax. And I'd like to point out, I have a copy of a article that was in the, uh, the Toronto Star, I believe, and The Guardian today. Yep. And it says right here, Senior Brampton City Hall staff approved a secret $1.25 million bonus slush fund. So in the meeting today with our auditor, I said, is that true? Was there a, fl a slush fund? She said no. And then the article said, City's Audit Committee to tackle 1.25 million in staff bonuses that could not be tracked. And I asked, was 1.25 million spent on staff bonuses? She said no. I asked her, was it able to track, were you able to, to, to track payouts to, to staff which were actually pay increases? And she said, of course, that's how we tracked it. A further article, a far, a a follow so how, up how was this generated then? So how I, I want to ask you how how was this supposedly representative of fact when you can ask your auditor and you can get an answer that is contrary to what was printed? Well, I have no idea. I mean, both Councillor Moore and I received questions from the reporter yesterday. I spent three hours responding to those questions, and the only thing that he could say in here was that I had been, oh, uh, that I faced criticism as budget chair for approving staff budget presentations with little council scrutiny and on and on and on. Um, I asked where the public record was on that and he said, well, the public record was a media story. That's not a public record. So I'm gonna go to a couple questions. Uh, Sunny says, do you have an update on the proposed GTA West Corridor Highway? The province said an update would be months ago. No, we don't have an update on it. Um, I can tell you that uh, a number of uh, the mayor and I'm not sure whether any councillors went or not to FCM, the Federation of Canadian mm -hmm. Municipalities, and on the list when meeting with our federal counterparts was the issue of the GTA West Corridor. We do need a decision made on that one way or the other yes. so that we can start planning the western part of our city uh, in a way that makes a provision for that. Uh, needed roadway, and if, if not the GTA West Corridor, then how are we going to move people around? Cody asks, Councillor Miles, what is your last minute message to your colleagues voting on the media motion? Well, I, I think it's, this is all about truth, honesty, and transparency. The same thing that the media asks and expects from mem members of council should apply to them. The media should not be above reproach. So what kind of uh, one other councillor uh, uh, mentioned in this discussion, and, and I was able to uh, view the whole uh, discussion that you had in council, brought up the question of expenses. Is this going to cost the city or the corporation of Brampton 
uh, increased money because of the posting of questions supplied to you in writing, which is done as a, as, as a normal course of action from the press on the website and with you publishing your answers. Is that gonna cost the people of Brampton more money? Well, right now members of council do not have a, a press secretary. The mayor does. Um, we don't have a press secretary. We get the questions and we answer them. So the only thing it would take is to upload it to the website. So there's absolutely no cost involved. Peter, or Peter, <laughs> <laughs> Michael. <laughs> um, I'm gonna tell you what I did yesterday with the series of questions that I was sent by the media and my response. Right. I put a message on Facebook that said that I have received a number of uh, questions from the media on the HR report on the audit committee. Right. And uh, if you are interested in receiving a copy of the questions and my full response, then email me at elainemore.ca and I will provide it for you. Well, one of your I think it can be as simple as that. Yeah, well, well one of your council, fellow council members suggested that we don't need to go through this whole posting on that, that through social media and through uh, people going to your website that you can direct people to that, uh, to those answers and you can correct things that are in the press that are incorrect. Is, is, that, is that a viable solution, do you think? Well, um, any opportunity to correct um, in factual information with the press I think is a good thing but what this particular motion will do will it will inform the public that it doesn't matter what media story comes out that they can have an opportunity to go onto the city's website see what the reporter asked the member of council and what their response was is there another municipality in Canada that's doing that now no I think that was actually a question somebody asked that was that you that asked that question? No. Somebody asked that in council if there was another municipality in Canada that is doing this as far as full disclosure and transparency from print media who submits questions. Well, I think in fairness, we have referred it back to staff, uh, in part for a legal um, Which means what you've done is you, you've put it Made aside sure to have your done, legal... We've set uh, it aside, and, we've, and, and we have asked staff to report back on any potential um, risk to the community, and risk includes the financial... Uh, implications of that risk includes, um, you know, has there been an experience on the part of another municipality um, where we could learn from that experience? So there's a lot to be said for sober second thought. And I think we did the right thing by referring it back. We didn't do that initially because right. I, I guess to Councillor Miles and, and me reading it and others, it just seems so simple. Yeah. And and really, yeah. we probably we well, should have known nothing is that simple. So you're protecting both be. the city we, and the people. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So you're watching Facebook Live. Uh, go to us uh, at Facebook, and it's Live Town Hall. My name is Michael A. Sherbong. You're sitting here with two councillors from Brampton, Gail Miles, Regional Councillor 7 and 8, and Elaine Moore, Regional Councillor 1 and 5. Correct. Um, so let's go to some questions here. Uh, Marianne says, so if the facts are coming from media stories, the reporter, in essence, oh, that just zipped on, in essence, can make things up. These then are not facts? That's correct. They're not facts. In a lot of cases, the information that is, is in the story, I have, I have the one from the Toronto Star last Thursday that talks about me as an, as an embattled Brampton councillor and refers to... Are you embattled? No, I don't think. Okay, I'm just I, th I think I feel pretty good, um, and and relates to think. But it says here that the motion was intended to quiet media scrutiny of elected officials. Absolutely not. And I would like someone to explain to me how posting the questions and the answers would ever quiet media scrutiny. Can I can I answer that question? Just jumping, well? Link. I'm going to jump, just in. jump in. Okay, I'm <laughs> jumping in. I'm going to jump in um, on the university. We're switching gears from transit to university here. Don't it talk is, about the wonderfulness of the university coming I'm here. not. Okay. I'm not going to. But I am going to report on the fact that there has been a number of media stories that talked about, talked about Brampton's failed attempt to attract a university, which technically, I suppose, we were unsuccessful in attracting a university prior to now. There's a number of, of um, factors that need to be considered. Number one, a municipality does not apply to have a university. Universities and college community do that on their own. In 2014, the province issued um, a statement that they were going to increase the number of university spaces by 60,000 right. and issued an RFP for that. Mm -hmm. um, they had 13 submissions and out of the 13, 
One was awarded for 4,000 students. That was York Seneca in Markham. Okay. So that means that there were 12 unsuccessful bids. Correct. But the way it's characterized in, in our local media is that we had a failed attempt that somehow we should hang our heads in shame because, you know, we submitted something. Barry submitted two, and both were declined. In fact, at a 13, but only one got it. The fact is Brampton didn't get it at that time, we and it was a get failed it, attempt. You're saying the way that it is framed? The way, yes. the, way the story is framed, uh, it didn't say that there were 13 uh, submissions to the province uh, for a potential 60,000 increase in the number of university mm -hmm. placements across the city. In fact, at the end of the day, they awarded 4,000, and I'm not even sure whether that's over one or the life of that. that. But, but I must ask you, is but, it, when but, you're in politics, is this not part of the game? You can't, oh, I mean, always, you sure. can't always have butterflies, roses, babies, and, and nice pictures. So and it we was know a that. failed attempt. Of course you do. I mean, you're both seasoned politicians. That's right, yeah. You've served this community for many, many years. So sometimes, if you look at the characterization, is, is that what, but what the it key wasn't, is here? My point is that it wasn't Brampton's failed attempt. The submission on behalf where, where Brampton would be the host municipality mm -hmm. for it was submitted by the University of Guelph and Centennial College. They came to Brampton Council and said, we have an idea for student learning at, uh, at the university level in response to the statement that but the But a reporter would say the salient information is Brampton applied, they didn't get it. How, how they communicate that is where we're having a bit of a problem. You, yes. you have a different issue, yeah. I think. I, I think you have yeah. a different issue, right? Well, yeah, I have a different issue because I believe that I have become a target of the media and there has been a story that has been spun in at least four newspaper articles about me pushing to buy a money-losing golf course to bail out. Well, let's talk about that. I mean, you brought it friends. up. You opened the door, so I'm going to I'm going to open the door. I mean, that that has been publicized. I mean, uh, uh, the city council spent a million dollars on 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 putting uh, money into a hockey team, and there was lots of controversy there. Kind of attaching you to that wagon and saying you're trying to buy a failed golf course because um, your constituents have an intrinsic value because they don't want it developed. How do you react to that? Okay, so the f facts. I'm going to talk about facts. Fact number one is I placed a motion on the council floor for staff to go for $50,000 to go away and do due diligence to see if it was in the best interest of the municipality to purchase the clubhouse and the golf course. That's a fact. Since that time, there has been no other discussion about it because when you're in a, a real estate negotiations or, or a deal, it's all done in private. But the press also brought something up about uh, campaign uh, contributions. Yes. There's all okay. that too. But first off, okay. the the notion that it's um, the notion that it's a, a golf course that's losing money has been said I don't know how many times four, five, six. Nobody has ever said that the golf course is losing money. The reporter has said it repeatedly in every article. There's no information. Is the golf course making money? I have no idea. Well, that would be a question that would put uh, an end to that fire, would it not? Well, that, that's what it would, but the reporter should be asking the question. I've told the reporter that it's the clubhouse that is losing money. The clubhouse was losing money and it was shut down. The golf course is still operating. Would that not lead you to believe that the golf course is maybe not making money? Not necessarily, no. Well, uh, the yeah. hockey team's still operating, and they got a million bucks would, from the city. It would Anyways. lead me to believe <laughs> it. So, but it's that's the. So where inaccuracy. do we sit with that? Just let's let's put a bow on that because I don't want to dwell. On, where do we sit on that? You waiting for the report to come back? Waiting for the are report you still, to come are, back. And and are you in favor of the city uh, taking over that golf course? How would I know? I have not seen any data or information. The only thing I ever did was put a motion on the floor to have them to take a look at it. Because and how do you react to the, uh, the inference by some media reports that there was some untoward uh, contribution to campaigns and some other okay. stuff that... There was, there's three allegations that keep getting repeated. Don't get mad at me, I'm just, I'm just I'm trying I, to get, I, I, I can I'm see sorry. the fury in your eye. <laughs> because this reporter continues to say the same message over and over again and he knows it's not accurate. 
Okay, let's he go to a couple of questions. He knows it's not accurate. Marianne wants to know, so if the facts are coming from media stories, or we already asked that, sorry, James says, why does the motion only relate to print media? I can take this video and edit it any way I like. Why unfairly target one medium? I guess our experience and the frustration that we're having in the city of Brampton is with the print media. It's with the Brampton Guardian. And when in, in, in this instance, when this motion was brought forward, we had had a discussion about the fact that the province was going to start looking at a high-speed rail system from Toronto to Windsor that would go through Brampton but not stop. And you were ignored. Brampton was ignored. We were ignored. Right. And Councillor Moore and I... Uh, Why were you ignored? We don't know. But we were very upset about the fact because that's going to impact the economic vit vitality of our city. So we had this discussion. And Council said, okay, Councillor Moore and Maz, you go away, work with our government relations staff and develop a strategy about what we're going to do, how we're going to advocate for for this. And how did this relate to what the media reported? The media, all the media did was was talk about how well, Councillor well, Moore and I had uh, really... There's a difference of opinion around the council table. The mayor um, believes that not having a stop in Brampton proper, um, but having one in Malton will serve the east side of the city and is, and is, least co is less concerned than Councillor Miles and myself about the fact that Brampton didn't get a stop. We think we're kind of center ice. If Kitchener and Guelph can have spots. And how did the know, media handle that? So, um, so the mayor has one perspective and it, that may be shared by other councillors. Councillor Maas, myself, Gibson, I think, uh, Sprovieri. Uh, we, we see it quite opposite. A difference of agreement around the table has been characterized as um, we're in different factions around the table. Um, yeah. You know, the mayor's camp, uh, other people's camps. Um, so when you distill it down to um, just a dysfunction. Well, the press and would say that there was, a, there was some turmoil when we talked about the LRT. But the, yeah. There, oh, there, there, we, no, I, mean, I, I there, get there that. has been, a, a negotiation and discussion is what you guys are there to do. But, but a community is well served mm -hmm. when they hear, and so is council, quite frankly, mm -hmm. when we hear the debate around the table. Oftentimes I go to the table, you know, on an issue thinking that I'm going to vote one way and after hearing the debate and the conversation around the table, um, you change your, either you change your vote completely or everybody agrees to kind of find a middle ground. We benefit from that and so does the community. But I want so to answer when that it gets distilled down, question. Yeah, but when that gets down, you know, distilled down to, well, they're just, you know, scrapping with each other and it's petty squabbling. It's not, in fact. It's part of the process of But it's of part debate. of the armor that you wear. I mean, it's oh, part of, of what you do. A truck driver has to be able to circle his truck, make sure the tires are there in rain, slush, sleet and hail, just like the postman. It's part and parcel of what you signed up for. And you have to have that tough skin, right? So they well, may- we have tough skin. But this but isn't <laughs> about us. This, no, this, this isn't. This it's is about, about the community the, being the served. City. Okay. This is about the city, the high speed rail um, train not step stopping in Brampton will have a huge impact on the economic vitality. It's important. The reporter needs to tell the public the truth and the fact that was discussed. Instead, the article was veteran councillors show little work on transit expansion. Yes, and the, the questions. Uh, you talked about the questions in council. But how many times have you contacted people? What have you done? He was asking for specifics of your efforts and council's efforts to try and get a stop in Brampton. Um, he filed those questions, I believe, if I'm not correct, at 10.45 in the morning yes. and wanted answers by 5 o'clock and you were in regional council, so you couldn't address those questions immediately because you had he the regional them by council to deal, yeah. to, to deal with. But the story comes out and says that there has stagnation on the transit file. If that was the case... Is there stagnation on the transit no, file? Absolutely, no, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I will tell you that the Zoom Transit in the city of Brampton is the most successful transit initiative across the country. We have experienced 67% increase in ridership while our population growth has only been 16%. The province and Metrolinx are coming to the city of Brampton this week to do a film about 
Zoom Transit and the success that it has been in the city of Brampton and that kind of an initiative to market how it can be successful in other communities. I don't call that stagnation. Okay, just a reminder, million you're watching dollars. Facebook Live. My name is Michael A. Charbon, Gail Miles, and Elaine Moore here, both counselors for the city of Brampton. You can reach us at Live Town Hall and post your questions. A couple of but quickies can, here. I want to do, can I just go back to this stagnation? Because Councillor Miles raised this uh, during the debate around the table where she raised this story about... But the reality the is the press, you didn't get it. Here's the, here's right? the reality, and I'm going to no, link this... No, we didn't get the no. press, but we here's, answered the question. I'm going to link this back to uh, the motion that Councillor Miles has put forward. We don't know what questions Mayor Jeffrey was asked. We don't know whether this is a fair characterization. But is that... Is that is, do you... See, so, now you open a whole kettle of fish, that's another door that's open. No, if but it's the asks, same for us. So would you would you then say, as part of what your motion is, Gail, uh, Councillor Miles, a big pardon, that you, you would want any question, so if a question from print is submitted to the mayor in print, then she is obliged to post all those questions online and post all her answers online, as well as you and every other councillor. If, right. if you go that's to right. Freedom of Information, that is subject to FOI. Okay, let me get some questions in here. Ron wants to go, maybe Oops. councillors should be doing more regular town halls. Like this one, explain where they stand on all topics. Okay. Carla asks, the region of Peel closed all their child care centres a few years ago with the intent to provide more child care subsidies for families. Today, the Ontario government announced its intent to create universal child care of up to 200,000 child care spaces. They have committed to create... Does the region intend to get back into the child care business? If not, what is the plan for supporting child care for children zero to four in Brampton? Okay, so in regards to the, the writer of this question, she's absolutely right. Uh, Councillor Moore and I both served on the committee mm -hmm. that dealt with this. And uh, we spent months and months and months doing due diligence before we made the decision to shut down. Since we have shut down, we running our own centers and in right. fact supporting the other centers with the dollars we have are it, it's a it's a phenomenal good news story we have no one on on the waiting list for subsidy um, every parent or child who needs a subsidy the subsidy is available uh, to my sure. understanding mm -hmm. we have also been able to do a lot more training for daycare centers so that they will take children with special needs, which in the past there was a huge wait list for people with special needs. Mm -hmm. And so, infants. Yeah, so the and Region Appeal is, a, is the service manager or the service provider for um, child care. So all funds would be So there's channeled. no one on the wait list? No. As far for as subsidy. We, for, for subsidy. subsidy. No. Okay. But if I can take it one step further th to answer the question yep. uh, that's come through, and that is, and I think we all have to answer this question. Is, is being in the direct delivery of child care a government responsibility? Should government be competing with the private and nonprofit sector? And, and that was the fundamental question that when we had the task force at the region where the region withdraw right. direct service, because we're essentially the service manager overseeing our own service providers and the private and nonprofit sector. So that's the question that we had asked ourselves and ultimately came to the decision that government should not be competing with the private sector. So Kevin says, uh, I'm watching the live town hall on the train and it's awesome. Thanks, Kevin, for tuning in. A question from Cody. The media said the mayor says the high speed rail not stopping in Brampton still makes Brampton an attractive investment hub. Was that content right? Did the reporter cherry pick the quote? We don't, well, well, I don't know what the mayor's uh, comment or quote was to the media. I know what ours was at the council table, and that is that we believe that it's disadvantaging our community. But what the question is, is that the mayor said that the high-speed rail not stopping in Brampton still makes Brampton an attractive investment hub. Was the context right? Did the reporter cherry-pick the quote? So we don't know if the reporter cherry-picked the quote. Um, I do know that I don't agree but with... But there is trust in the media. Do you have no trust in the media? You have to have trust in the media. I have no trust in the media. Really? I have no trust in the Brampton That's Guardian. That's sad to say. Yes. But, yeah, I, I mean... I have no trust in the Brampton Guardian and its reporting on City What news Hall agency do you have trust in? News. 
I have trust in Brampton Focus. <laughs> oh, now, now that's self-serving. <laughs> no, the, 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 whole purpose, the whole purpose well, of this is, and, and we believe in this. Yeah. But uh, this is honest. Well, this is this straight is up. Honest. There's no BS yeah. here, ladies that's and gentlemen. It's straight up. That's what it is. So but let I, me continue with these questions. Okay. It, but I have trust in the taxpayers in the city of Brampton. I have trust that they want to be able to understand the decisions that, that their elected officials are making. And I think that there is not one source of information for anybody. So they, some will use the newspaper, some will use online, some will use Facebook, some, you know. I think there's a number of outlets that people are using. And I think that that's the pressure that the media is under these days. There's a lot of competition for to you know, to put out to the to the electorate or to well, people sometimes generally. Well, sometimes a good news, good news story doesn't make it. No, of course. I mean, no, shootings. I, I, know, I mean, so no. here's here's a qu interesting quote. Many campaigns made the mistake of hiding from bad press, thinking that it will eventually blow over and they can get back to the real campaign. The strategy rarely works. When bad press strikes, gather your team, review your response, and get out there and address the issue. Deny it, clarify it, admit and explain it. Whatever the course is, correct it. Action, do it. Don't sit there in the wings waiting for the issue to be forgotten. Okay, so that leads in. I would love to have the opportunity to, to talk about the donation that, that the Giampaolo Foundation made to Wellspring Chingacuzzi and how in so we're this, coming back to the golf course in this golf whole course, issue about there's three mm -hmm. things that that the the reporter continues to make allegations about and one of them is a donation from Giampaolo um, who is Giampaolo uh, the Giampaolo foundation is a foundation that is was set up by the Giampaolo group of companies okay. And they made a donation to Wellspring Chingacuzzi. Actually, Councillor Wellsprings is a cancer. Wellspring Chingacuzzi is a cancer support Correct. center. Okay. Um, in 2004, I was diagnosed with cancer, and it was uh, the most debilitating year of my life. Mm -hmm. And after it was all over, um, I really felt that that there was nowhere in the city of Brampton for anyone to go whose life was being impacted by cancer. And I made all of the mistakes um, that typically people do when they've, they've been told you got cancer. So, so how did G and Paulo and the golf course come so into So that's how my husband and I started a community foundation to raise money to build a cancer support center. Right. Councillor Moore was one of the first volunteers to come on that committee. And in a very short period of time, we raised over $8 million for Wellspring Chingacuzzi. Okay. Today that center is running and thousands of people every year go through its doors. There is no government funding. So how does Giampaolo funding. play okay. into the, the golf so, course? So in 2000, and, must have been 2005, Councillor Moore and I paid a visit to the Giampaolo Foundation mm -hmm and told them what we were trying to do, and they made a commitment to Wellspring Chingacuzzi. Right. So Riverstone is owned by one of the companies. Riverstone is the golf course that we're talking about. One of the companies okay. that the Giampaolo Foundation falls under. But just to show you the, the, the absurdity of the, of the statements in the press, I have a, I have a list here of the Giampaolo Foundation. In the last, since 2005, the Giampaolo Foundation have given $2.3 million to community charities, many of them in Brampton, not right. just Wellspring, but William Osler, Princess Margaret, the Pill Children Aid Foundation. I've got a whole list. Right. This one's of interest. Erin Oak Kids is um, a new center that is being built. They have given 750000 and committed another two point five million dollars. Okay, so they're they're excellent community yes. supporters. Yes. How does that click into the so golf course? The reporter keeps alluding to the fact that I have proposed this motion as a bailout for my developer friend who supported my favorite charity. So we have a, a company here who has also made another. But the truth of the matter is that. that gentleman 
owns the golf course or is part owner of the golf course. All those the, all those statements are true, right? That's that's where you but take the innuendo. fact okay. and put innuendo and bias into it, and you create this illusion of wrongdoing. So the okay. G GM Polo so, Foundation. The other thing I want to tell you is the GM Polo Group of Companies is a billion dollar corporation, and they don't need the city to bail them out of anything. And that's where the fact needs to come into it. This illusion that there's some mismanaged company, they're also a platinum, um, a, uh, recognized as a platinum um, managed company in, um, by Deloitte and Touche. Okay, so, I wanna get to a couple of questions here. They're, um, they're piling up as one would say. Um, why is high-speed rail a priority when it's one of your top three transit priorities? We reject HMLRT because it was only number three. Well, first of all, the HSR is, is proposed to go right through downtown Brampton on the same GO train tracks that we've been fighting for 25 years to get two-way all day GO. And it connects us to... Nobody was talking about it a year what ago. What they're calling the Silicon Valley of the North, the mm. innovation highway between our corridor between um, uh, Kitchener and downtown Toronto. When I say we're center ice, we're center ice. Uh, a comment here from Jacqueline says, councillors spent $50,000 for advice on to purchase a golf course, yet she doesn't know if it's making money or not. The, and that's again the spin. What counts... Well, it's not spin, it's, you, you admitted that. No, you but, but there was 50000 the, spent to yes. send staff away to evaluate. Yes, whether or not the, the clubhouse and the golf course was, would be good value for the municipality to consider. It did, there it, in no way at any time have we been able to say or see whether or not it is good value. Are we gonna get an answer to that? Absolutely, okay. as soon as the, um, the and that's the other thing. Council are not involved in any of the no negotiations. We have no idea at this point in time um, the exchange that's going on between the and, two parties. Okay, part we've got about 37 it, minutes I left. Can. I want to I want to <laughs> rifle through a couple of these. Richard says council is totally dysfunctional. That's Richard's comment. Uh, comment from Chris says, what about just improving our goal service instead of worrying about HSR? Another comment from Kimberly. I agree that transit is awesome. And uh, Ron says, Councillor Miles keeps saying, I don't know. If she does not know, why is she willing to spend money? Why does City Hall want to spend taxpayer money on sports centers and golf course debt? The $50,000, let's be clear about what Council approved. This That's more than many people make. Oh, I understand that. But if we're going to make an acquisition, we need to make sure that it is a good acquisition. It's in the best interest of the taxpayers. Some people are questioning why. I, I understand, but this was not just about, I mean, a golf course, you look at the books, quite frankly. Yeah. You look at the books and see yeah. if it's making money or not. But is the city but, of Brampton in the business of supporting hockey but, teams and golf courses? But this the, is not the assessment, the, the $50,000 was to do a, a, a full structural assessment on the clubhouse, yes. which has which squash, you to trans which has squash into boards. A no, no, into no, a rec center. Into a rec center. Into a, into yes. a recreation center. Um, to, to look at the, the pool that's there and the facility. Is it in, does it have good structural integrity? Does it have potential to be used as civic infrastructure? Can it be programmed to support the community in everything from swimming lessons to seniors programming mm -hmm. to uh, opportunities for young people to be there? The, the golf course piece of it um, is is secondary to was a achieving aside. a presence of civic infrastructure okay. where where Councillor Miles and Councillor Fortini in the ward they represent there is virtually no Nothing. civic infrastructure yeah. between I don't know Torbram Road and and Highway 50. So the question here from Tim says regarding the recent audit showing 1.2 million slush fund, did staff inform councillors where the money has gone? Okay, so first off, there is no slush fund. Uh, absolutely no slush fund that was reported again this is what we're talking about these are the kind of facts or, or statements that the media puts out there there is no slush fund however there was quite an alarming report that was placed in front of council today and we were very concerned about about the contents of that but and it was 
the, it, what it did was it showed that the senior management team had been making decisions in regards to salary adjustments, salary adjustments and increases for non-union staff. It was reported $7,500 of increases on non-union people to the extent of 135 people. That's what I believe those are the numbers, ball, baseball figure. That's right. Is that correct? I don't I know if that's it's 135, says, I think it was yeah. 125. Well, that's, some but, people would say that's pretty shocking. But anyway, it of is course shocking. it is shocking. Did you guys know about this? No. Nothing. We so you knew just nothing. heard about the report? We got the report and and basically the audit report showed that there was it was would have been impossible for council to ever be able to there was, there, was, a, there was no red flags. So how does how does first of all you were in charge of budgets, is that not correct? Yes. So how does the report come out today to you and council and it came out in the paper at the same time? How does that happen? Because on on Friday it's, it's because the agenda is published on Friday, by, yes, it's but, published but usually on, by four or five okay. o'clock yeah. Friday. So it's available to the public, but that's when we get to see them, the Sometime. agenda as well. The, uh, the agendas are emailed out to members of council or um, made available through a link. And so, at that same time, it's made public. So one would say, one would ask the question, if you were in charge of budgets for so many years, how come you didn't know about this? Or were, was it kept from you? Or did you know about this and it was done a different way? How would you react to okay, that? Well, the audit, one well, first thing, when you're the budget chairman, you're, you're there to control the meeting. You don't have any special powers. You don't get any more information. And you really are not responsible, any more responsible for the budget than any other member of council. You're there to control the meeting. So the fallacy that the budget chair should know more than anybody else really is just But if one a would fallacy. say that 135 people received okay. $7,500, that's, that's a chunk. So the, what the report pointed out, however, mm -hmm. was that these um, out of policy, they were called out of policy requests, mm -hmm. were completely managed within the commissioners and senior management team. And so when a budget comes to council, um, it will show how many staff are, are in. So you never a, saw any of that? No. No, we, and we want to we make it very clear that what happened was wrong on all levels. It was yes. never approved. Well, that's good to say it's it wrong, was but never, some people are It was saying, never approved yeah. by council. It was never uh, reported back no. to council. In, in the audit report, and something that council did right last uh, October, September, October, when there was the transformational change at the city, the internal auditor now reports directly to council. In previous, pre previous to that, the internal auditor reported through the CAO, but um, functionally you know, I'm, I'm a simple, to... I'm a simple man, and no, I'm a simple man. When someone wrong. tells me that 135 people got $7,500, Wrong. Something, something's up. So uh, you're watching Live Town Hall. We're here with two councillors from uh, Brampton. Uh, Councillor Gail Miles and Councillor Elaine, uh, Councillor Elaine Moore. Uh, you can reach us at Facebook Live, at Live Town Hall. We're here till 8 o'clock. So, Michael, okay, I just, uh, in regards to the to that report. Uh, <laughs> There's two women here, Michael. I haven't no, that's think you were going to uh, win. My job is to, is to move <laughs> forward, and, and okay. you're being very good. So, apparently, in, <laughs> in the, the latest rendition of this report uh, written by the reporter, it states that Councillor Miles defended the practice of OPRs. That is absolutely not true. Councillor Moore was in the meeting with me. At no time did I defend the practice. So at why all. don't you use the word lie? I guess that, that would make it liable, right? You can't use the word lie. I Untruths, mean, yeah. alternate facts. And then he he is also went that, on. Isn't that the vernacular that we're using now in the land of Trump? Alternate but here's, facts. But here's another statement. It says that I, Councillor Miles, argued practices in question were not illegal. I never argued practices in question were not illegal. I questioned staff to see whether or not they were illegal. But okay, so I've got four comments there's here. There's the spin. Stand, stand strong, my dear. There's the spin. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> comment. First comment is binder. I smell lots of fishiness. Second comment, uh, we have no trust in Gail now. Uh, third comment, I have no trust in the media. Comment from Ron says the Guardian won't allow reporters to take a lot of space, so they must be selective on what they write about. Another comment, Marianne says, how do you expect the council to trust the Brampton Guardian when the reporter continues to sensationalize and make up things? It is one thing to report what is happening in the city and another thing to mudsling against individuals. Another comment, 
uh, from Thiva. This just looks like a weak attempt to have damage control from the counselors. One more comment and I'll let you jump in. <laughs> Bob says, no, we, this is we want yeah, yeah. Of course, okay. this is okay. important. Right, Natalie, you've been in here for a little while. Yeah. Bob says, when I was growing up in the 70s, people used to tell me, uh, only believe 50% of what you hear news-wise because only 50% of that is true. Not sure how it applies to that today. Well, and I want to go back to the one, the statement where they said only 50% can yes. be reported because, yeah. or no. No, yeah. They said they can't report it all because they've got a limited so amount space. of space. Yes. Yeah. And, and I think that really goes, again, we work supports, on sound bites. It, it supports, supports our motion. It supports the, the motion because... We're saying if only snippets of it can be put in mm -hmm. the story because of space and there's a lot of territory to cover, we're just saying we're going to make available all the questions and the complete response so you can see what the conversation, whether it was in print or not, was about. If council strikes down the media motion, will it affect the transparency of council? And many councillors, like, ran on transparency, including the mayor. That's true. No, and I will do exactly as I said to you. I'll just, I will continue to do that. I will why don't you do post, it independently? It doesn't, why does it have I, to be a motion? No, I'll post it on Facebook that says I've got questions from the media. Mm -hmm. I've answered them. If you want copies of them, send me an email. I'll flip them out to you. Why is... Uh, we can do you, it independently, Michael. Yes, we can. But it would be far better is if there was one spot on the city's web that residents could go if they read a story and they really want to know, is there more to this than what I'm being told? they would go to one spot. Yeah. So the way it is now, they would have to go, you know, if we decided, okay, we're gonna start posting to our web, we can do that and and we could refer people there. And yes. they may not feel comfortable. A lot of people will pick up the phone and call us and say like, I wanna to talk to you about this. Yeah. Right. And sometimes they're happy and most times not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this would, at their leisure, if they wanna do it at 11 o'clock at night and it's too late to call us, they can go on and have a look at it. So, As I said, people people go to various sources. Not everybody, and per, particularly generational, are not on Facebook. They're not on Twitter. They'll go to a website. Well, there's not a many sources in Brampton. There's well, not many sources in the region of Peel. And, we, and the only time exactly. CP24 or someone comes out here is when there's a shooting or something tragic that happens. As far as municipal politics are concerned, and I, there is a bit of an echo chamber. And I want to yes. get this out. We have repeatedly said to staff, you need to live stream our meetings. They do it in Hamilton. What's going to happen now with Rogers not doing it? Well, and that, that's a problem. That's we a we problem. have to, to really speed this up. All of our meetings should be live streamed. All of them. because Especially now because Rogers well, is I not going to, say, to be there. I have to say, I watched the interaction that you had on the discussion of this in my preparation and my research. There was a couple of instances when I, I want to ask you, is there only a certain amount of time that a counselor is allowed to speak? Is there a duration of time? Because there are some, there are some counselors that are taking... Uh, a lot. Yeah, we'll, we'll categorize it like that. Sometimes it's like, for goodness sakes, get to the point. I mean, there's millions of dollars at stake here. How do you... How do you... It's supposed to be five minutes. Yeah. Um, so who, do, who moderates that? Who's ever in the chair? In the chair. Yeah, the chair is supposed to okay. moderate Okay, so uh, yeah. Ron says um, Greenbrier is is in disrepair. Why is the golf course money not being spent there? Well, again, Ron, we don't know whether or not the golf course, whether we will be spending money on the golf course. This is a motion that council just asked staff to go away and investigate, find out, you know, the shape of the building, is Councillor Moore. There, there's been no discussion no decision there's been no deal this is this was simply doing our homework yeah is it does it make more sense for the city of brampton to perhaps purchase what is really quite a lovely building that's had its doors shut for a recreation center rather than going and building something new would we have heard about this more. if it wasn't reported uh, by the brampton guardian do you think Oh, yes, of course. It's It was in the public forum. So Rajinder has a comment. He says, sorry to say the most dishonest group in the world is politicians. Now, this is a voter. This is someone who, I mean, uh, puts a, an opinion out there. There are many people that would put in question politicians. I mean, Donald Trump is, uh, some would say he's doing well. Some would say he's yeah. doing horrible. Other would say he's changed it. He's a businessman of politics. Um, you guys have been in politics for a long time. You lady, you, you've been... Uh, you've been respected, you've done many good things, you've fought many fights, you've won, you've lost. Where does this put you after going through this? 
Okay, so I don't binder. think it's any different than a characterization about a lawyer or a used car salesman. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think you reach a point <laughs> where you know. Those are dangerous examples. But, we're but talking you know, about I'm politicians. just saying. You know, I. You know, <laughs> we all grew up, and I. You know, we heard conversation around the dinner table yep. with adults, and yep. and you know, the conversation was the same 50 years ago as it is today. But that's um, that's true of the media. Why would our mayor need to have a separate press secretary? to deal with media requests. It's because there is a real distrust of, of the media and what they're going to say. Why would members of council now not even respond to an interview that, that, was, that was verbal? Because we do not have the faith that the answers that we give will not be changed or censored. That's a tough answer, Councillor Everything Mills. is in because, writing think, yeah. because we, we want to know that if, we, if we're if we're writing it, we expect that that's what's going to be recorded. But that's not the case. The, the, um, the golf course one is a prime example where, yeah. where the media said, I wouldn't answer the questions. I answered the questions, but I told them I wasn't allowed to discuss the deal because it was in camera and it would be a breach of a code of conduct for me. So Christine says meetings should be live streamed. Absolutely. Another comment from Marianne. The reporter in question uh, warned people on Twitter that he had a big story coming up. He prides himself in sensationalizing. I would rather read what is really happening. It is very mean-spirited. Uh, Nazem says, is Brampton getting any, any infrastructure money slotted by the province? We've actually been getting quite a, a lot of infrastructure money. And we've been we've been trying not to not our share. <laughs> okay, not as much as we deserve. That, well, well Brampton doesn't for have sure. as many that's seats true. on uh, on uh, the region either. I mean, that's another question that's, that's going to come up too. That's yeah. another real concern for me. Cody Council. says, why not have a press conference frequently? Well, that's a possibility. But press conferences typically are are called by the mayor, and um, but and you're having we, this fight though, right? I mean, you're being called out in these articles. It's your picture that's in the Toronto that's Star. Absolutely. So why don't you have a press conference? Well, I guess I could, but I think that's what this is. I did. I was on Talk 1010 News the other news the talk other 10 -10. news Talk 1010. I'm here trying to relay to the public the fact that they are not getting the straight bill of goods here, and I have countless, countless um, examples of. When, do, when, does it border, the when, when does it border twisted. on getting legal? Because if someone okay. says, um, you killed my cat, okay. you killed my cat. You say, I've never had your cat, I don't drive. You killed my cat, when does it get to that point? Uh, I'm not saying I don't like I would cats, like so to address when, that. When, when, when does it get to that point? I would like to address that, That's Michael. I asked it. Because <laughs> I have had two legal opinions in regards to what I'm going to characterize as a, a target by an individual reporter who is misrepresenting the facts and trying to create an aura that I am doing something wrong. And both, both lawyers told me that I needed to get legal advice, that it wasn't going to stop. So the only lawyers that deal with this kind of thing are in the city of Toronto. And do you know how much they cost? Well, yes, I do, as a, a matter of fact. A lot of money. Uh, because uh, I, I recall a former mayor who ran into uh, yes. some similar conditions exactly. and had to go to that. Uh, so, Nandeep says, what about the story about the $1.25 uh, approved for the city by staffers? Why did these councillors not bring this up to the residents of Brampton before the Guardian story? Because we became aware of it at the same time the Guardian did. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Carla says, are you putting more social housing in uh, Kingsbridge neighborhood in wards 7 and 8? Kingsbridge? Knightsbridge? Yes. Knightsbridge? Kingsbridge? Knightsbridge? Knightsbridge? What did I say? On oh, Knightsbridge, yes, sorry. Uh, there, at, at the present time, there is, there is no, no application plan. for that. From what I see, this is from Ivan, from what I can see, uh, all they are asking for is transparency. I don't see any problem with that. Thank you, Ivan. You're absolutely right. So where That's do we what sit this is now? About. So, I mean, there comes a point where you got to stand up and fight. I mean, I read that thing about 
when they're talking about campaigns. You can't keep quiet because if they're stating a lie and they keep repeating a lie, a lie becomes truth because no one stops it. That's right. If they're saying the truth, uh, that's why you won't stand up and say that it's wrong because they're saying the truth and you don't want to admit that what they're saying is true. So you, you get that yin and yang. What, what is it going to take and what are you going to do because this may not stop, I, I doubt. I'm going to tell you that I am not going to be a victim of this reporter. And I am going to continue to tell the public the truth. When the reporting is inaccurate, I'm going to say it. And I can tell you one of the reasons why I believe I have become a target is when this reporter was actually reporting stuff that wasn't factual, I asked him to start telling the truth. So, and, you're watching Facebook Live. We've got about 10 minutes happened. left. We're here with uh, Councillor Gail Miles and Councillor Elaine Moore, uh, both from Brampton. We're talking about the politics, uh, reporting on politics. We're talking about transparency. Uh, Councillor Miles put forth a motion to have any questions that are posted to staff, to the mayor, and to councillors that are put in written form, which generally 95% of all the questions from print media is. Those questions should be posted online and the answers that the councillor, mayor, or staff who was asked to respond to it also post their answers. So that's transparency. That's not, uh, that's you're not trying to affect it. And there will be no uh, censoring of the questions, no uh, manipulating of the questions. They will be as presented, put on. Okay, they so don't there have are a couple of questions. What about, what about, uh, there is international media. I mean, we have a, a huge contingent of multi uh, languages in, in the Peel region. How will you deal with that? Um, is there a, a, a position to look at what's happening in television, what's happening in radio, what's happening on telephone conversations? Are those questions and those answers then not to be posted? Are they going to be transcribed? I mean, those are all the questions that come yeah, no. with this envelope when you open it up, right? So what our, our primary concern at this point in time is, is we have one newspaper in the city of Brampton. But let's, let's, and, and I get that. But there, when you talk about posting it on, I get that. Yeah. I know, we, I, I understand that. But you're you, just talking functionally. Yeah, how I'm talking, happen? when you're talking about transparency. So let's look at the, the motion is, you want to ask a question of your counselor, give it to me in writing, I'll post it on my Facebook page, or I'll post it on the city's website, and then I will answer you in full. So when something comes up, when someone says, geez, I wonder what Gail said about this, you can go to the city website and you can look it up and you can do your own research and look at it for yourself. So this isn't meant to usurp the media. What we're saying is, is questions and answers would be posted at the same time. So the media would have their answer. It's, it's not going to prevent any of the, the kind of reporting that they would normally write. The, the, the difference is, is that we will post it. And if someone has a question about what was said, they can go. They can go to the website. They can just so, go say, what did she? What did she say? Rowana says uh, Brampton has one of the most youthful and diverse cities in the country. How is this reflected in council? And Christopher asks, uh, Councillor Moore, as a chair of the audit committee, how could you be unaware of 1.25 million bonus slush fund? Well, first of all, it wasn't a 1.25 bonus slush fund, and the auditor's report, the internal auditor's report, was very clear. There was no communication to audit committee or to council on what staff were doing. It was completely invisible. There was no uh, council approval and there was no report. So was it illegal back then? To, well, our internal auditor says no. Uh, that was question was asked million today. Dollars? Was it 1.25? From 2009 to 2014. Was it 1.25 million dollars? That's what she reported in the report. That's, that was I mean, coded. That, that's a lot of money. You're, that's you are, prison time, my that dear. That is... Um, so who did that? It is so who out, signed that check? How did that, how did that leave city council? This is, like, here we go. I mean, It is I understand, outrageous that this happened. I am, I'm a simple There's, man. When you yep. talk about audit committee and this and that and so on, that's all great. When I'm at the kitchen table and at the end of the month, when I got my credit card bills, my mortgage bills, exactly. my gas, and if I'm going to be able to go golfing or not, I know how much my, my money is. How do you... How, I mean, the, the question is, Councillor Morris, chair of the audit committee, how could you be unaware of $1.25 million? Because, because audit is, it's an internal audit. They are completely independent. They go in, I can't, as, as chair of any committee, you can't direct staff. 
I get the audit reports at the same time the public and my colleagues get the so reports. So would you, well, doesn't this I don't upset write you? The report. This, 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 I so it looks like someone slipped it, slipped it through the back door then, That's, right? So that is exactly. So how are we exactly. going to never have this happen, happen again? Well, because right. you now, put the right people in place. I have said year after year after year, the best way to ensure accountability, the best way to ensure top quality public service mm -hmm. to the taxpayers in this city is to hire the right people. We have, and I believe yes. we have the right people, I and we sure we just have. We got rid of everybody. We got a new, we this got is, a new CEO. We got, we fired everybody. We got new people in. I mean, this was the whole transition with the Madam Mayor Jeffrey coming in. Yes. That we're cleaning house. We're transparent. You got a new CAO. You got new economic development. You've just you've thrown everybody out and said we're starting new and fresh. Michael, if you got hired into a new job yes, and you knew that there were some issues because you'd been reading in the paper yeah. for the is past this a couple of years. Of the cleaning house is that yes. what we're saying if the you were coming in revealed it if you were coming in and going to head up a department human resources in this case would you not say i'd like to have an audit done because i'd like to know exactly what i'm dealing with going so forward. would you support the ma mayor madam jeffrey's uh, initiative to have an exterior and outside arm's length auditor to come in and have a look at the books would I believe we've that? hired the the right people to do the job now. That's not what. That's not the answer to my question. Our, our, would you? Would you? Because you've hired someone in turn. Okay. Would you hire a third party, arm's length, independent auditor to come in and say, this person, being an ombudsman, I don't care what you call that person, he or she, not related, not known to anybody in council, anybody in politics, that comes in and says, okay, open your books and everybody go away, and I'm going to come back. Mr. Auditor's okay. going to come back. I'm going to put it this way. You're having some renovations done on the house, and you've hired a, you got a, a name of a contractor out of a flyer that came around to the house. You go, ah, oh, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna, oh. no, I'm gonna, just let me finish, um, Michael, okay. please. Yep. So you get, the contractor gets in there, and you're watching the work, and you're thinking, I'm not so sure this is the right contractor, so you fire them. I'm going to do more homework the next time and make sure I hire the right contractor. I'm going to get references. I'm going to uh, look at their work history. I'm going to do a whole heck of a lot more homework when I hire that second contractor to go in oh, and repair and finish the job. Just... So if you've hired the second contractor to go in and repair and finish the job, are you going to hire a third one to oversee the second one after you've done all your homework on the second one? Well, we've just found out, goodness gracious, somebody spent $1.25 million. Yeah. Something's not right. We have hired. Did you, what? How did you vote the on the mayor? How did hired. you vote on the mayor's motion when she wanted uh, an independent auditor? Initially. Yeah. We all supported it. It was unanimous. Okay. So, it, is it? But it, I believe that what we have done is hired the second contractor, doing our homework, hiring the right people, and it was that second contractor that, that did this. the HR audit and did and found but, and, the, and, the, and reported okay. it yeah, to council. The process is totally different today than it was at the time. This is not going to go away, the, unfortunately. No, no, and we don't want and it, it to. Should. No, we and don't want it someone, to. someone's going to have to stand up for that. So, um, the I mean, y you need to read the audit report to fully understand uh, um, what what the outcomes of that audit report so were. So I want to interrupt you. I want, I want to give you both a minute just to conclude. I First of all, I want to thank you both for being here. It's not easy. Let me tell you, it's not easy because I push for questions and they have to answer them, so it's not easy. So I commend both of you being here and that there's not 15 lawyers outside because if this was a provincial thing, we'd have lawyers all outside. We don't have that. You two ladies came in here of your own volition and answered the questions that were posted. So I thank you for doing that and I appreciate that. We're not going to find um, some lawyers outside. No, there's door. no lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> um, Councillor Moore, I'm going to give you a minute, if you wouldn't mind, just to conclude and talk to the folks at home and just put a button on that. A minute, I'm going to hey, ask okay, you, please. Okay. I believe that the community, our taxpayers, are well served when we have balanced factual reporting. When debate around the table is allowed to happen in a healthy environment where all of the arguments are put out on the table. And we rely very closely on our partner. And our partner is the media. The media needs, they, we need them as much as they need us to get out the good, the bad, and the not so bad, and the not so good. We, we need you. This is a relationship that that uh, I think we have the same objective, and that is to promote the community that we call home, to promote the community th that we want our residents to feel proud of living in. And so this is a partnership with the, with the media. This is an attack on the media. This is a way of saying, um, we understand you have a limited amount of space to print the story. We want to be able to print the rest of the story on our website so that our residents who are, are 
really smart. They're politically smart, and they mm -hmm. they would like to have access to the full story so that they can form their own opinion on major issues facing this city. Regional Councilor Elaine Moore for Awards 1 and 5. Gail Miles, Regional Councilor Awards 7 and 8. Uh, thank you very much, Michael. I guess my point of view is I think the city of Brampton is a pretty amazing city, but how do we build trust with our business community, with our residents? How do we start building a sense of pride with our community when the media will only report the negative side to every story? And I think this is why this particular motion has, has come forward. Um, our business community is, is telling us that they are that they are impacted by the negative press. Um, it's it's just it's so important that factual information is provided to to our community. And uh, you know, I I'm at the point now where um, I have all kinds of evidence that this particular reporter is attempting to malign my, my reputation. Um, both Councillor Moore and I have had individuals tell us that this particular reporter is saying he's going to bury us. Well, so your, your motion is coming up, uh, I believe, in about two 14th, weeks, 14th. the 14th of June, That's and right. it'll come back after uh, staff has a review. Okay. And then we'll vote, you guys will vote There'll on it. There'll be an informed decision on it. Uh, Councillor uh, Gail Miles, thank you very much. And again, you, uh, Elaine Moore, thank you very thank much you for being here. Thank you very much. My name is Michael A. Charbonne. Thank you so much for watching Live Town Hall. It's been our pleasure. A special thanks to Brampton Focus, Paul Vicente, Don McLeod, and Fazal Khan for putting this together and hope that you will come back once again. You can always go to our Facebook page at bramptonfocus.ca if you have any questions or comments. Again, my name is Michael A. Charbonne. Pleasure being with you and thanks so much for watching. Thank you.